just look at the size of this place. In just a few weeks from now, Fruit Logistica 2023 hosts companies large and small from around the world, all of them involved in the fresh produce business. And if you haven't got your ticket yet, make sure you do so in advance. Head to fruitlogistica.com and visit the ticket shop. When it comes to fresh produce companies, there is no bigger company present in Berlin than the world's largest fruit and veg business, Dole. I've been speaking to the group's CEO, Rory Byrne, about the future for fresh produce suppliers in what is a very challenging marketplace and the group's own plans to boost demand for its growing range of branded produce. Rory, great to have you with us. Uh, last year, we witnessed a major milestone for your business with the merger of Total Produce and Dole Foods to form Dole. Uh, which now stands as the world's largest fresh produce company. Um, can we start by hearing a bit about the progress you've made in terms of taking that merger from an initial transaction to a commercial reality? Yes, well, thanks, Mike, and nice to talk to you today as well. So obviously, in terms of the world fresh produce industry, this was a hugely significant milestone in creating what has now become the world's largest fresh produce provider. Um, we also hope that it will become the best and the most efficient uh, fresh fruit pro provider because certainly the legacy companies have hugely complementary assets. Dole, while it has a strong market presence, also has some fantastic production assets. And Total Produce, while it has a strong focus on sourcing and production, has some great service and marketing capability in both Europe and North America. So we've certainly got a magnificent platform in which to build on for the long term. I think one of the more pleasing aspects of it is the reaction from all our people right across the group. Everybody has been phenomenally enthusiastic and understanding and believing in the merits of this transaction. And that obviously gives you a great platform to build on when you've got the full commitment of the great group of people that we have in the totality of the of the organization. Rory, you mentioned those uh, large number of assets and organisations worldwide that belonged to Dole Foods or indeed to Total Produce. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how they, how those different pieces have merged together, how, the, how they're fitting together? Yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the key steps we've taken is to try and rebrand the total group under the Dole uh, logo and the Dole trademark and 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 label. The, the brand, the Dole brand, is one of the leading, if not the leading, brand in the fresh produce industry. So that's the first thing we've done. We've brought together four divisions: um, our fresh fruit division, which is the the platform for bananas and pineapples. We've two diversified divisions encompassing our non-tropical fruit, our non-banana pineapple businesses in both Europe and North America and then we've got a, a vegetable business primarily in North America. So uh, we've done a lot of work in gradually build, bringing together both of those businesses. Um, obviously we've got two businesses that separately functioned very well so it's not our objective to, to fix something that's not broken but to bring together and maximize the opportunity that existed with both companies we've mm -hmm. we've made a lot of progress um obviously uh, steady progress we're doing it gradually and um big focus obviously with the course of 22 with the complicated world backdrop on the day-to-day -day activities and making sure that everything worked as well as it could do in the context of the challenges that the world threw at its last year. So mm -hmm. good progress, a lot done and definitely more to do and more opportunities to, to take advantage of in the future. I see. Now you, you've alluded to uh, a particularly challenging year for the fresh produce industry and, and perhaps we can move on to discussing that. Uh, what kind of changes have you seen that are important over the past year and, and what do you think they mean for the uh, group's future direction? I think the last year has been characterised by a lot of complexity around supply chain costs, supply chain availability, inflation. It's had a huge impact on the, the, the cost of fresh fruit, along with the cost of many other items, you know, inflation being a huge issue across 
pretty much every single economy. Um, I think for us, um, while it is a very complex backdrop, our scale gives us a particular advantage in terms of managing our way through that. I think the fresh produce industry generally has been, for want of a better description, a tough industry to operate in. So you've got to be very focused on cost. You've got to have skilled operational people. You've got to have a huge attention to, to detail. I think across our total organization, we've got all of those characteristics. And I think by sticking to those basic principles and focusing on costs, focusing on efficiency, maximizing the benefits of scale. I think it positions us uh, and we've, we've, we've shown that over the course of 22, we've managed our way through all of the challenges thrown at us in a very positive and good way. And we hope going into 23, um, as it evolves, we can continue to manage and, and grow and develop despite the complications that are out there at the moment. Mm. Now, ahead of the merger, Rory, there were a, a couple of major opportunities that you spoke about as a group. Um, the first of these was to diversify your portfolio in what you described as mature categories like bananas and pineapples and indeed vegetables. Um, what kind of diversification were you talking about there and, and when do you expect to achieve that goal? Well, we've already obviously started to, to to build on our core categories, bananas, pineapples, obviously very, very strong categories for the entire group. We've got some of the world's leading positions in both bananas and pineapples. And our objective here is to maximize the util utilization of our entire group, whether well, it's in Europe through you know, our strong position in Iberia and Scandinavia and the UK and Ireland and Northern Europe, and make sure whether it's service capability, ripening distribution, market access through customers that we maximize the opportunities on a combined basis that we have, utilizing the fantastic um, production base that we've got in both bananas and pineapples. Obviously, we're not just focused on bananas and pineapples. We are also focused on 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 a whole wide range of categories, and um, we continue to work on those and develop um, you know, steady. We've made very good progress. Um, we've a lot achieved and a lot more that we still can achieve over the coming the coming years. Mm. And, th and those new growth areas that you also identified uh, were in products like berries and avocados and organics. And I know just in the in the last few uh, days or so, you've uh, made a, a new venture, uh, a new a new development down in South Africa for avocados and lychees and mangoes. Um, just generally, how are you going to capitalize on those new category opportunities uh, and how are you going to meet new demand? Are you, are you going to need to invest in certain areas or develop the capability that you have already? Yeah, I, I, we see good growth in uh, berries and avocados and organics, and they are three categories that we already have a strong but probably somewhat fragmented uh, position in. So our, our big challenge is to coordinate the activities and positions that we've got in, in, in those different segments. And certainly the new development in South Africa to give us the service handling capability to export more avocados as part of that process. Mm -hmm. So you look at avocados, for example, the consumption in Europe is significantly materially behind the consumption per capita in North America. So we still see uh, plenty of road for growth there. You know, we've got a strong position, whether it's Legacy Dole in, in Chile or through our El Parque um, joint venture in Chile and Peru, uh, Opi sourcing out of both Mexico and with our eco farms in California. In Europe, we've been developing for a long time, whether it's the Canary Islands and laterally in mainland Spain, worldwide sourcing into our nor northern European activities, it developed our enhanced our service capability, ready to eat, ripening um, in our exotics business in, in Holland. So We've done a lot of work in the different market segments that we oper operate in. We're working very closely with some of our big banana growers who have invested uh, significantly in the avocado sector and we'll be able to provide our logistic and marketing capability to make sure that those investments provide the right returns for those growers as well. So mm -hmm. our objective is really taking the very strong platform we've got on avocados and maximizing the, um, the synergies that we've got within it. Mm -hmm. very 
Aries is something similar. We think there's a lot of growth opportunities there. Again, we've got a strong position in, in North America, the dual diversified business out of South America, out of Mexico, um, through Opie in particular in the US, we have a strong position in blueberries and strawberries. Um, and again, in the UK and in Northern Europe, we have a strong berry business. So again, it's a, it's a process of bringing together the strengths. And it may mean in some cases that we will invest further in particularly in strengthening our production and sourcing capability and perhaps in the evolution of varieties as well in the berry category. Mm. Mm. It's interesting when you you, you now have this uh, very international business and in, in some ways um, you, you must look at uh, the, the business at how it is in North America for example. The, you mentioned avocados and how many avocados per capita they eat over there um you know almost with with a bit of envy thinking well how can we get that to the same level in europe um and and during the pandemic a lot of people in the produce industry spoke about um a new era of healthy eating and a chance for fresh fruit and vegetable marketers to connect with consumers uh, on areas like health and nutrition um do you agree that that there is new demand which didn't exist in the past uh, and if so, you know, how can Dole make the most of this kind of new untapped potential? Yeah, I think there's no doubt that uh, one of the consequences of the pandemic is that it focused everybody on the need to be healthy and in particular uh, healthier eating and you know fresh produce uh, hits the spot on that in terms of the nutritional and other positive advantages of, um, of of eating your five a day fresh fruit and vegetables so the challenge for us really is to maintain that momentum post pandemic <clears throat> and uh, I think younger people as well are very focused on healthier eating and I think that for the long term is a very positive sign we're going to work very closely continue to work very closely with the industry to try and on a generic basis bring up the consumption of fresh fruit and vegetables and i think we'll build on some of the very strong work that dole as a standalone company did in inspiring educating consumers and enhancing and expressing and explaining the nutritional values of, of fruit and veg so we think there's, there's there's room for growth there in terms of maintaining the momentum of healthier eating post-pandemic mm -hmm. Mm. Now, of course, you mentioned the fact that as, as a big group with a big uh, global footprint, you can absorb to a certain extent the effects of, of some of that cost inflation. But it's it's certainly true that inflation in consumer markets is going to be a big factor. Uh, and few people would regard the, the current economic climate as especially positive. So as a supplier with lots of different markets and uh, lots of different production sources how can you navigate a way through this crisis it, it's certainly going to be difficult isn't it there's no doubt that the backdrop is very very difficult and inflation is complex for consumers in particular and for everybody who participates in the supply chain i think you know as i said earlier our scale and our size gives us the ability to be more efficient than a lot of the smaller players um, and we've got to make sure that we fully maximize those efficiencies that are possible from the scale that we've got mm -hmm. we've always worked with tight margins we've always had a strong cost focus we will continue to do that and, and hopefully get our products into the marketplace as efficiently um, and cost effectively as possible and hopefully mm. the consumer in terms of discretionary spend appreciating the uh, importance of healthier eating um, will move away from and uh, will not move away from consuming the historical levels of fruit and veg and, and and the evidence to date suggests that you know even though prices in some categories have inevitably gone up because of some of those cost pressures and uh, that people still want to consume uh, fruit and veg our mm. challenge just to, to, to make sure we maximize the group strength and our scale to bring the product to the marketplace in the most efficient and cost effective way possible. Mm -hmm. you, you, and you mentioned efficiency and cost of, cost effectiveness. Um, that's all kind of bundled up with this other concept of in particular efforts to make the fresh produce supply that comes into all these different markets um, more environmentally uh, friendly, more sustainable in terms of ethics. Um, those green goals are they still achievable are they they must be something that's very much on your radar as 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 that dull group absolutely we've got a huge focus and a very strong internal focus on 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 sustainability i think in world terms terms um 
The mindsets across all of the major economies have moved on very significantly over the last few years. There's a really clear realization that for the next generations of humanity, we need to have a very strong focus across every sector in terms of sustainability. In a practical way, I think you can see that with the evolution of electric cars and the number of electric cars we see on the roads across all all the geographies around the world. The evolution and technology around renewable energy, be it solar, wind, or waves or other other aspects and the focus that's going in to try and resolve the energy the energy energy question we ourselves you know embraced uh, things like renewable energy we're using electric vehicles where we can for deliveries in warehouses etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's a process that you are really strongly focused on to to, to make sure that we operate uh, all aspects of our business in a sustainable way as possible i th- i think the the momentum is there the opportunity is for companies like us to embrace it, which we have done fully. And I think over time, we will get there and hopefully meet the goals that uh, that the world is setting itself in terms of achieving a more sustainable world. Mm, fantastic. Now, in a few days time, um, we will see you at Fruit Logistica in Berlin. And um, I know that it's a show that's very important to you as a group. Uh, what does Fruit Logistica mean to you and uh, what do you hope to gain this time around? Well, I think first of all, it's a it's a one off opportunity every every year to bring together the global toll family. So it's a great opportunity to have you know important group of our senior management in one place in one location, an opportunity to um, understand uh, firsthand uh, what everybody is doing, spark some new opportunities, uh, um, spark and enhance our progress and our work on on synergies obviously also with our production partners with our global customers it's a great opportunity to exchange views it's a great opportunity to interact with other industry players in terms of the the areas of common interest such as sustainability and um, that we all have to work together on to make the world a better place so I, I think it's a great, we will also showcase some of our new developments around B exotic, some of our new value added range, um, and it's a good opportunity to do that also. Mm. Okay, fantastic. And uh, just finally, what can we expect from Dole in, in the next 12 months? Are there any big projects that you're uh, looking ahead to? Obviously, we've got a strong focus on day to day and making sure that we continue to perform successfully over the course of 23. We're continuing a huge amount of work on some of the specialised categories, be it avocados, berries and organics. I think as well, we're going to try and increase our focus in terms of being creative and innovative to try and deal with some of the challenges that we've spoken about earlier today. innovation around packaging, more efficient supply chain solutions, and make sure that we do capitalize on the health and well-being trends to ensure that uh, fresh fruit consumption continues to grow over the coming year. Well, Rory, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, giving us a chance to understand the direction in which Dole is heading. Rory Byrne, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. So that's all we've got time for on this episode of FruitNet's World of Fresh Ideas. Remember, you can go and see all of the episodes by going to Fruit Logistica's YouTube channel and head to fruitnet.com and sign up to our free daily news email. We look forward to seeing you here in Berlin for Fruit Logistica.